finally the last one. What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Mega Man X6 100%. I'm just cleaning up Ground Scaravich's stage because I realized when I left off last time, the subroom that I was still missing with the two remaining Reploids uh, is a very important one because it contains this, the la the, uh, the helmet part for the blade armor. Uh, what the helmet part for the blade armor does is it will allow you to consume less energy when you spam your special weapons. Which basically means you'll use less energy when you spam the dragonflies, the Yamark option. Uh, because really, what, what other special are you using in this? Oh shit, this is chaos. Getting out of here. Okay, so that's the last two Reploids of this entire stage and the last collectible from this entire stage. I, I never have to come back to the random hell that is Ground Scaravich's stage. And now we can move back on to progressing through the eight investigators. Today we are going to be hitting up Shield Sheldon, Rainy Turtleoid, and if there's time left over, also going to be hitting up Metal Shark Player stage. But the stage is an X- Six, almost said X4, the stages in X6 tend to be a little bit longer uh, than any of the previous games, mostly because they kind of act as two stages in one. Uh, every stage, of course, having the, su the uh, secret level, which culminates in a boss fight. So it kind of doubles the number of stages you have to go through. Uh, the gimmick to the stage is the one that there are invisible platforms everywhere, like so. Uh, you'll use- oh, you slide around on them, too, like they're made of ice. That's weird. You'll be able to tell whenever there is an invisible platform to stand on, because usually there will be something on top of it indicating where the platform is, like the, uh, the Reploids or some of the, uh, Metalheads. The other gimmick to the stage is that it's kind of a puzzle stage. It's a mirror-slash-light-reflection level. Everyone loves those. Oh, it's a pretty fun stage, though. <laughs> this one needs to go up there to hit the door. Unlock it. Let's see. Oh, shit. Need to get that one pointing down. That should reflect it to this one. Oh, god. That's such a good weapon, too. I mean... The Yarmark option is clearly the best weapon in the game, like, to the extent that I would call it completely broken and overpowered. I don't want to go in there yet. But it's not like the other weapons are bad, except, uh... What is it called? The Ground Hunter Scaravich's weapon? I hate that one. Either way, though, that'll even that'll get used at some point in this. I'm gonna try to do a better job of showing off all of the other weapons, too, and their charge variations. I feel like for, uh, for the last couple of X games, I haven't done as good of a job as I could have of showing everything off, as far as, uh, special weapons go. Oh, wait, I think I just hit... Yeah, I think I just hit the mirror on the right. Let me line these up real quick before I go and correct that. Alright. Yeah. Oh, shit. He respawned. Damn it. There we go, take care of him. <laughs> uh, you also have to bait the lasers into attacking you. Sometimes they'll go just like straight up, straight down in a direction you don't want them going. So you, act you actually have to be close enough to them to bait them into firing towards you. All right, now, oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's get that back on track. Now I just have to point this one down and we will be good to go. I think. Oh, no, I was... Damn it, I was right the first time. Let's get that back in position. Down. Finally, that should be the last light puzzle we have to do. Really not intense puzzle solving here. Right off of that drop, float on over to the left, and there's a false wall, and there's an invisible platform that you would have no way of knowing about. <laughs> Also, I should note that 
there are actually two invisible platforms behind that boss wall. Uh, right when you drop to the left as you're dropping down the hole. There's one right there, and then there's one that's just like an inch above it that lets you grab that Reploid. Now, if I had the Shadow Armor coming in here, I would be able to go through this part without dying. I still might be able to, uh, but I will probably die going after the heart. What the Shadow Armor would allow me to do is walk on the spikes uh, without taking a death. If I can bait the Nightmare over here to attack me and I can... Yeah, he doesn't want to do it. Nah, it's fine, though. Because I'll respawn like an inch away when I... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, when I respawn, I'll be right here. Normally, like, what I like to do is I like to get the Nightmare to attack me because when you take damage, you have invincibility frames, which means you just have barely enough time while you're invincible to grab the heart and get out of there before you die. Not too big of a deal, though, especially with, like, the crazy amount of extra lives you get in this game from rescuing Reploids. X6 is the hardest of the, uh, the 8X games. It's one of the harder in the entire series, uh, not just including the X games, but all the others as well. Uh, it's a pretty tough game. One of the things that mitigates a lot of the difficulty in it, though, is the fact that... There are really no consequences for dying in this one. Especially because of what I've been talking about with the extra lives. Uh, it's just, there's not that big of a penalty for it. Like, oh! Like there, I could have afford I could have afforded to fallen into the pit and die, but I mean that sets me back like 20 seconds worth of time and I have all these reploids to rescue giving me health and lives. Oh shit, I actually did mean to dash there. Uh don't get too carried away with die bobbing though. Don't die where you don't have to. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Uh, those ones, it might seem like you can actually cling to the side and then do uh, some crazy dashing to get both of those before you drop on the spikes. But you can, you actually can't suicide run those two Reploids up there. I have to come back for them with the Shadow Armor. Uh, because as soon as you touch the side, even though it's not a spike, it will kill you like it was a spike. So, just keep that in mind. You need the Shadow Armor for those two. I don't think you can do any any kind of tricks with the invincibility frames from taking a hit to get them either. I don't think the invincibility frames last long enough. Now we're finally at our third secret boss. Uh, this boss is a returning character from Mega Man X5. It is none other than Dynamo! Dynamo's back! X is just as surprised as you are if you haven't played this. Oh, I love what a shameless coward Dynamo is too. Dynamo also provides a method for farming Nightmare Souls. Also, the fight works very differently from the way it did in X5, even though he retains a similar move. Shit, that's not the way place I wanted to be. He retains kind of a similar moveset, except the fight is a lot more interesting now. So I'll spend most of the fight doing this, or his ground punch attack, where you just have to be on the wall behind him. Now, around three-quarters of his health, or I mean one-fourth, uh, he'll add these two attacks in. His Blade Slash, which returns from X5, and he'll also jump to the middle and just spam these. Let's see if I can do this correctly this time. Yeah, just jump over every one of them. There we go. I didn't dodge the Blade Slash, though. If you hit Dynamo with his weakness, which is the Meteor Rain, which is the weapon you get from Rainy Turtleoid, or, uh, what is his other weakness? I forget now. I think it's the weapon you get from Blaze Heatnix. Uh, if you hit him enough times with either of those weapons, he'll drop 600 Nightmare Souls. And every time you come into a secret boss stage like this, from now on, you'll be fighting Dynamo. So that allows you to farm Nightmare Souls from him. Anyway, though, I have about two minutes of... Shield Sheldon stage to go back through now, so we be seeing you in just a second as we get caught up to where we were and we proceed to fight Shield Sheldon. See you in a sec.
Okay, this time we want the laser to fire straight into the pink door, straight ahead. And that leads us directly to Shield Sheldon. Not a terribly long stage. However, that's kind of made up for by the fact that Shield Sheldon can be a really, really trolly fight. Uh, he can troll you and make this fight last an incredibly long time. If he wants, if uh, you have some bad luck. Which, my luck has not been amazing. If the 30 or 40 passes through Grand Scarevich's stage are any indication. The early portion of this fight is going to go pretty quick. It's when he hits his desperation mode that it's going to slow down a lot. He always starts off with his boomerang attack where he throws his two shells. You can duck or dash under them. And then from there, he'll move into one of a couple of attacks, uh, usually involving his clone, or he'll bounce around the room like Armored Armadillo. And then he'll repeat this pattern of going right back to the boomerang attack after every one of these. This one, you can just crouch in the corner and you'll almost always avoid any damage. And back to the boomerang. You can see his health just kind of burning down, and now we get to the slow part of the fight. Uh, shh. His hitbox here is pretty huge. Whenever you hit one of his glowing shields, he'll stop for just a split second to fire off a beam at you. That'll slow him down. That gives you a chance to actually maneuver around him, so try to shoot him. Also, you can do a little bit of damage to him in that phase. Uh, this is the other part of the fight that makes it very, very slow. Sometimes he'll lock himself into a pattern of doing this and the last attack over and over, which slows this fight down so much. Shit. Trying too hard to get a hit off on him in that phase. In this... Yes, when he goes down diagonally like that, or when he goes across you like that... Shit, I missed my opportunity, I think. And again, shit. You can actually do damage to him a little bit in that phase. What I would like him to do is do the boomerang attack again, because that's your biggest... There we go. No, that wasn't it. Uh, God damn, he is a cool voice. His Japanese voice is really good. All right, one more. Yes! No, I think I was too late. Oh, no, I'm not going to avoid him that time. Damn it. One more air dash. Okay. Please do something I like. Uh, no opportunity there. I missed him. No, damn it. Please die. I had three or four good attempts to finish that fight off right there, and I blew it. Can't even complain about randomness or bad luck this time. There's something. Yeah, I've seen him do the pattern of the shield attack, where he uh, surrounds himself with a glowing shield in that four corners attack, uh, something like six times in a row at the worst. <laughs> it's not great. Alright, now we've defeated yet another investigator. And we've defeated Dynamo, which is the final secret boss, so we don't actually have to do or show any more of the secret boss fights since they will all be dynamo from here on out. So now the pace in killing the investigator should pick up dramatically. And the next one we are on to, making sure I didn't miss any reploids. The next one we are going to be going after is going to be Rainy Turtleoid. Let's see, I do have Quick Charge equipped. That's all I really want to make sure I have right now. That and uh, Speedster, which I believe I equipped off camera and now that we have all four parts of the blade armor one of which we got from shield Sheldon which was the armor part uh, which gives you a new giga attack that fires out a giant blade and it also reduces the amount of damage you take we finally can use the completed blade armor for rainy turtleoid stage And we're gonna need it, because we actually can't get mm, any of the collectibles in this stage, aside from some Reploids, without this or the Blade Armor. Or a Shadow Armor, I mean. But then again, you need the Blade Armor to get to the Shadow Armor part in this one. Also, this is the, uh, the Mock Dash. It is a much further dash, one which you can hold in midair. Uh, you can also dash upwards. 
Also, you can see the effect of the, the speedster part, which just makes you your normal movement speed so much faster. Oh shit. Don't go after that Reploid. So it hasn't been too apparent up until now because of the path I chose, but beating stage will change something or add something to two other stages. That's why some of the stage select fortress, uh, portraits became red. Their stage effects, just like in X1, when you beat Chill Penguin in a Flame Mammoth stage, froze, except here, stage effects... Uh, bosses affect two stages at a time, and in less drastic ways. Also, every stage now can be affected in two ways, but only one effect is present at a time. Uh, we started off with Ground Scaravich, so beating uh, his stage caused multicolored rocks to appear in both Sheldon's stage, which you saw before, and Metal Shark Player's stage. Some of them can be destroyed, others can be moved. They're mostly there just to be uh, in an impediment, though. Uh, beating Yamark, who we already beat, will cause some annoying fly enemies to spawn and hover around you in both Blaze Heatnix's stage and Shield Sheldon's stage. When you beat Infinity Maginion, it makes Yamark's and this stage almost pitch black, with the exception of a few spotlights on screen, and we are not seeing that here in Turtaloid stage, because we have another Nightmare stage effect active, which is the one from beating Sheldon just now. And the one from beating Sheldon just now are... Oops, didn't mean to do that. That's fine, though. Uh, you've been seeing me get bombarded by these Soul Body clones of Zero. Uh, that's what happens when you beat Shield Sheldon. Uh, that happens in both this stage and Blizzard Wolfang stage. Wait, that's not... Oh, uh, wait, that's not Sheldon's uh, effect. Wait, yeah, it is. I'm getting confused with him and Infinity Maginion. And then when we beat Rainy Turtleoid here, it's going to affect Commander Yamark's stage, and it's going to affect Ground Scaravich's stage, which I'm never going back to anyway, so it doesn't matter. And the effect is that it causes gusts of wind uh, to blow you around in some areas of the stages. It's not the biggest deal. The floodlight effect, the pitch black with the floodlight effect, and the fly ones are by far the worst ones in the game. I should not have to ever deal with the floodlight effect, though. I'm trying to think, based on the order that I'm doing this, doing the uh, route in, if I'm gonna have to deal with the flies. I think I almost definitely had to deal with the flies. Uh, they're not. I don't think they're as bad to deal with as the floodlight. They're way more annoying, though. Also, you need some of the level effects in order to get all of the items. Also, because I didn't talk to Aaliyah back there at the start of the stage, she's still trying to explain this shit to me, I think. Come on, be careful. Shit. I was running forward after I made that dash. Uh, the rain here is acid rain. It will very, very slowly cause you to take damage over time. These pods will heal you back to full life. You have to take out uh, the rain generator along with the four cores protecting it, giving it a barrier. Actually, I think it's more than four in this stage, or in this part of the stage, uh, in order to shut the rain off. Now, the reason that you need the blade armor uh, to get collectibles in this stage, especially this one, which is the shadow armor part, the armor part for the shadow armor, uh, it's because your normal air dash with a falcon armor is not, it does not last long enough in order for you to make these dashes, like, through the spikes. Also, they're very, very precise shit. They're very, very precise dashes. You have to be just barely off the ground in order to not bang your head against the spikes. Uh, let's see, that should... No. I think I would just barely nick... That's definitely too high. I would just barely hit my head on the spikes. That should be good. Yeah. So, almost every one of the It has too high. Almost every one of these has a Reploid or something else hidden behind it. And there are a lot of these. 
These guys are kind of annoying because anytime you're firing on them while their guard is up, uh, they, they don't drop their guard until you stop firing on them for a little bit. That's him. Still a couple of, uh, still a couple of cores left that we have to destroy for that generator, but we have a secret boss room to do before we get around to that anyway, because there are a couple of Reploids in the secret boss stage, even though I'm not gonna be shit. Not gonna be a cool guy and make every one of those precise air dashes <laughs> through the spikes. At this point, I could leave the spikes alone and come back when I have the full shadow armor, which would make this easier, but I'm here now, so there's no point waiting. Um, even though I'm not gonna be- I'm gonna probably cut ahead once I reach Dynamo, I still want to show the secret stages off because, as I forgot in the very beginning of the playthrough, uh, there are still Reploids hidden around every secret area. I thought I wouldn't have to come into most of these, but yeah, I was forgetting that one crucial detail. Like so, one Reploid over here. I don't think there are any nightmares in this sub-level or secret level, so I don't have to worry about any of them getting infected, which is really, really nice. I've been having to worry about that almost every single stage. Uh, every part of every stage up until now. Shit. Now, uh, the combination of all the zeros flying around, the acid rain doing constant damage over time, the bats, the armored enemies, that can add up to be a lot of damage, especially if you're being as reckless as I am, but I can afford to be reckless because the Reploids will heal you. Also, you do get a fair amount of healing items in this secret level, if I remember correctly. Ah, uh, come on. There we go. Alright, now... Should be, like, two more cores, I think, plus another Reploid. Not keeping complete track of this. <laughs> yeah, there's one more. I think there should be one final one. I want to say there's at least another Reploid. So let's... Oh, it's gonna interrupt my air dash, shit. And I'm not doing great on health. There's the healing item I was looking for. Ah, uh, shit. Use the invincibility frames, no problem. I really should start avoiding them. I, there, are, there isn't as much of an opportunity here to heal uh, as I thought. I've way overestimated the amount of healing. Yeah, let's try not to die in a stupid way. It's one thing to take an instant death from spikes or a pitfall or something. That doesn't feel so bad when you get when you get killed just by taking constant streams of damage, that's what makes you feel like shit. <laughs> Should be fine now, though. Don't have to hold any L's. Alright, now we are heading towards yet another dynamo fight. Did, was I calling him a gate fight before? No, that comes later. Uh, we will be cutting ahead back to where we were. Back to making progress in Turtleoid stage. See you in a sec. Okay, I... At the stage select, I was at 14 Reploids that have 16 in this stage. I know I missed this one. I don't know where the other one I missed is, so I'm gonna have to come back into Turtleoid stage later to clean this up. Because there's still one Reploid not accounted for. Not missing, thankfully. There's no infected Reploids here. I'll worry about it later. No infected or dead Reploids, just one who is not accounted for. I'm not sure where I could have missed him either. Alright, now we are coming up to Rainy Turtleoid, who is, I believe, of the uh, eight X Games, all eight standard investigators slash mavericks. Rainy Turtleoid, I think, is the biggest one. He might be second to Frost Walrus. No, Frost Walrus was way smaller than him, actually. Yes, yeah, biggest boss. 
biggest pain in the ass sometimes. So before you even have a chance to do damage to him, you have got to take out those two green gems on his back. Their hitboxes are way, way smaller than you might think. It means you have to aim a little bit precisely. A feature of the blade armor I forgot to mention though is that you get the nice large charge shot back. You don't have the dinky little slender one anymore. It's the, probably one of my favorite features of the blade armor. Once you take the two green gems on his shell out, he'll become vulnerable for a short period of time. They regenerate really quickly though. So one thing you're going to see me do is I'm not going to take that green gem out yet. I'm going to wait until after this phase so I can actually maximize the amount of hits I get on him. Uh, because you see, when I'm going back and forth, dashing off the wall like this, it doesn't give me a great opportunity to hit him. And meanwhile, his green gems would be regenerating, so this way I can get a decent amount of hits off on him. Okay. Oh good, he hasn't gone into his desperation attack either. So if I'm lucky, we shouldn't see his desperation attack, which is really, really, really hard to dodge. Alright, and I'll give him one more cycle. Since he didn't use his desperation attack last time, he shouldn't use it this time. I'll wait. Oh shit, he's been- yeah. This is his final attack. It's hard as hell to deal with. Luckily, it doesn't last too long. Alright, now I have to finish him before I deal with two more of those. <laughs> and there it is. I really like the Rainy Turtleoid fight. I like pretty much every fight in this game, actually. They're all pretty good, except, except for Ground Scaravich. Ground Scaravich is one of the only shitty fights. Shitty stage. Shitty boss. Shitty fight. Really, really pushing the hate for Ground Scaravich in this playthrough. He's like the one bad boss in the game. Shit, man. Anyway, that is gonna- yeah. Only one more Reploid in that stage to go, and I need to figure out where it is. Anyway, that's gonna do it for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.